Hello everyone and welcome back to the Tech Stack channel. So today we are trying to explore one uh, interview question. So in one of the interview, they ask the question is, can we use two throws? So basically when you're running this uh, RE framework or might be some other thing, whatever it might be. So basically we are using the one throw. But uh, in, in the interview, he asked, can we use two throws? So the answer is yes, you can use more than two queues, three, seven, ten, how many queues you want, we can use, but it's a complete vary and depends upon that. So this is only for the knowledge purpose. Okay, now we'll try to explore how we can uh, add the data to the two queues and how we can get the data from the two different queues. But if you are using two queues, you can go with the two queues, three queues, whatever it may be, n number of queues you can use. So that's the question. So we'll try to explore that how it can come. So first of all, uh, open this config Excel file. So in this config Excel file, already when you go to settings, we can see this orchestrator name, queue name. So this is nothing but as a queue name. So now what I will do now, so I will just create one sheet. So let it be the sheet name, it's fine. And I will make this as queue names. Okay, queue names. This is done. After this, I will go to this orchestrator. So in this orchestrator, when I see I have the two different queues are there. So one is RP challenge and another one is the RP challenge one. So just copy. I will update this first queue and I will again copy this second queue. If you have more, you can copy and paste it here both. So how many you have, you can just update this. So now from this point of conflict, this is completed. So just close this uh, conflict. So now next what I will do you now, I want to load this data to the queue. Okay, right now when I go and check uh, view transactions, there is no transaction right now. So I will go this and I will load this second step. So for we need to uh, run that now. So for that already I have designed a small like just I'm reading the data from this specific workbook and updating queue to the RP challenge one and updating to uh, data to the RP challenge two. I will just run, uh, run these steps. So once I run this, I will got the data in the queues. So let me run, uh, complete these steps. Okay, maybe the file is not available. Let me check. Okay, the file is not available. I will just go to RPA challenge and download that file. RPA challenge. So let me download this file. I will. Okay, already this file is okay. Let it be anyway. We are downloading this file. So coding files after this UI path and RPA enterprise and later data input. So I have downloaded the Excel file, that's it. So now here I'm not going to process any website, nothing, just we, we need to check whether we are getting this data or not. So let's go back to the uh, studio and I, what is this problem? So let me copy the path from here and I will take it. <laughs> it's got name as soon. So let me explain this. And anyway, I will copy this path from here to avoid the error again and again. Okay, this is done. Uh, simply, I'm running this automation. So now it got completed and we'll go to the orchestrator. We'll check the tools is available or not. The first thing. So let me go inside and I will check these transactions. So now when you check here, so this is total 10 are available. So we have the 10 transactions on the challenge one. And similarly, we'll go and check for challenge uh, two transactions as well. So totally here. So now this part is done. Okay. After this, uh, for example, the queues are running. I want to capture that uh, transaction name, transaction ID. What is the queue name? Okay. For that first part, uh, I created one more Excel file, uh, not this file. So I created one more Excel file, which we call uh, log data. So this is available in the output folder. Just I want to capture. So I want to know now which queue item coming from the which queue. Okay, got my point. So for example, I have the RP challenge. Uh, that item is coming from where? So we need to check like that. So this is the UE UE queue name. Okay, that's it. Now this is completed. So that thing where I'm updating now. So once I go to process transaction. Under this process transaction, I can see this transit transaction state. So there I'm updating this each and every queue. So when I go inside, I have this one log Excel file. So I'm updating this data. 
So when you check here, log data A1. So I will get the rows count and I will ID uh, item ID and the queue and what is it? Queue name. Okay, these three things we are capturing. So now this is also done. Let me close this. Uh, I don't want this as well. So now we are not touching any code, nothing else. Just we are going to the get transaction data state. Okay, now we are in the get transaction state at it. Now let me open this workflow. Okay, now I open this workflow. So now how we can identify how many queues are there? We don't know. No, because for the purpose, definitely we need to use this one for loop. Okay. If you are using this for loop, uh, before that we need to read the data. So we can read the data from here. So initial state, we can read the data. Every time I don't want read now. So I need read that read the data for only for the one time. So one time activity. So I don't want to uh, read this again and again. Uh, that should be go to let me go to um, init all applications. So, so then we can read the data. So open this workflow and downside already I think build this logic. So let me check whether it is available or not. So just I added only this thing in config file already. I have the file data and sheet one. So let me cross check whether I have the sheet one or I have the some other sheet. So I have the sheet one only under the sheet one. I have the multiple queue names are available. So just close this and <clears throat> I have declared one variable which we call queue data table. So this is augment which I have declared. So we need to pass this data to the outside now. So when you check here, uh, queue data table. Okay, just save this and go back to here and just check in where it got stored. So let me open this thing and it, it got uh, uh, stored in the queue data table. So just go and check the variable is available or not. So queue data table. So it is available. Okay, done. Now go to this transactions. Uh, so here we need to give this parameter. So one parameter we need to give. So parameter and arguments both are similar. So here in Q data table. Okay, and this is the data table now. So just give this uh, argument type as data table. Now just save this one and go to main. And where is this activity? Go to transaction data. And here we need to import the arguments. Then only will get that argument and we can pass as argument data types I mean argument data. So when you check here, queue data table is uh, available and I pass this queue data table. Okay, now this is done. Now again, go back to the get transaction uh, data sequence and here I will take for each. First, I will take for each row data table. So just drag and drop this for each row data table. And after this here, which table we are looping now? So in queue data table. So just update this. And after this, I'm taking one variable. So just for our purpose, uh, understand purpose. So in this variable, I will make this variable as Q name. Q name. And here I will make this as current row of zero dot two string. That's it. Okay. Now what we do. So we'll go here and I will check this. Uh, I will type here Q. So when you check here, we can see this get Q items. So when you use this activity, we will get to know uh, how many Q items are available in the specific Q. For example, if you say RP challenge, so in this RP challenge of one Q, under that Q, how many items are available? Nothing but as a transactions, how many transactions are available? We'll get to know that. So now just uh, update this is the orchestrator folder. And here, what I will do, I will update this queue name. So every time my queue name will be changed. So just update this variable. Okay, I will just copy and paste it as well. Okay, done. Okay, now this is done. Next, what we need to do now, we need to give this condition. Sorry, over if condition. So just drag and drop this if condition. And here, what I will check now, I will just check this count of this one. So I will give one variable which we called. Uh, I will give Q item count. If you want, you can change that variable as per your requirement. But as of now, I am going with this Q item count. I will give here Q item count greater than or equals to one. So the 
Q item will be either the one or might be the either. Okay, here I miss this one. Q item count dot count. So it might be the one or might be greater than the one. If it is zero, then I don't want to do anything. Just to skip that thing and nothing will stay. Okay, now this is done. After this, I will take one as an activity. So in this, okay, uh, here as an activity, it won't work. Here we need to uh, add the dictionary. Why? Because when you go here, so here Q name is taken. Okay, this Q name we need to update. For that, we need to use this dictionary uh, step thing. Uh, for that, uh, go to here. Go to uh, init all settings. So if you know how to declare that one, so you can just follow this step. Only three steps. That, that's it. And just copy this one. Copy this. Okay, add key or configure pair value which is available on the init all settings. Just copy this activity and go to this queue transaction data and paste in the if condition. Okay, just paste it. Okay, here for that this is done. No issues. Here I will sort out it. And here the name is getting from the current row of zero dot to string. That's it. Okay, now how you can get this value? So this value again go to here orchestrator queue name. Okay, just copy this one and go to the top again and change the value here. Just edit and change and remove this dot to string. If you put the dot to string, then it will go through the error. So if you want, you can try from your end, but uh, as of now, I'm not showing that part. Okay, now we got this queue item got saved in the orchestrator queue name. Okay, after this, what I will do, I will put one message box here just for our understanding purpose. So just I will put um, message box. I will put here message box. In this message box, I will already I have copied this value now. So I will make it. You know me. Okay, I will make this as current queue name. Plus removes. Or else if you want, we can pass this value. Or uh, here we need to pass this value. Current queue name dot to string. That's it. Current queue name dot to string. Okay, now this is done. All the setup has been completed. So there is no errors, nothing. So what it will do, you know, it will just go to the one by one transaction and it will just give the message box like uh, right now the queue name is this one. If it is RPA, then it will give the RPA challenge. If it is not, then it will go to not. And here we need to do one more thing. So once it is come, so I want to exit this loop now. So I don't want to continue this loop. If we continue, then it's a some mistake. Then I will put here break. Let me drag and up this thing. So I want to exit from that loop. So I don't want to continue. So I got my sat set, satisfied the value. Then I don't want to go inside. That's it. Okay, now everything has been completed. We'll go to the queues. And so right now there is not process anything. All are in the new. And what I want to show one more thing. I forget this while I'm saying. So when you see here, uh, where it is okay. So when you check here, queue items. So here we need to filter out. So uh, might be it might be having in process or might be the new. If you want to go and you can put the any filters. So most of them you can go with the new, not go with the in progress. So right now it's any of uh, this is for testing purpose. I will put the both. Okay, don't go for the success. Uh, this and all. If you go this and all again, uh, anyway, uh, if you go with uh, failed or success, all are available. So try to go with the new transactions item is available or not. So that is a best preference. Uh, we'll go for that only. So new. Now everything is done. So what it will do now? So just it will go pick one by one item and update the uh, queue name into the Excel file. The step it run it will take. So totally here ten percent twenty transactions are available in RP Challenge. Uh, has a ten transactions in RP Challenge. One has a ten transactions. So what this is uh, queue name? Uh, it throw the error. So queue name is does not exist. Let me check this. What is the queue name here? So when you check his RP challenge is there and I will move this orchestrator and I will check this maybe having some space issue or something else. We need to check it that as well. So when I check all the here, I just checked. So there is some kind of issue with these uh, spellings. So that's it. So I'm running this uh, automation again and we see now uh, whether uh, okay, uh, not in here. So let me stop this automation and go run from the main. So let me step into 
and we can hit this continue and we'll see uh, whether okay now when you check this current queue name is our page challenge so it will repeat for the 10 times so we have to wait for things and now it is second time repeating so like this it will go keep on one by one so once uh, this uh, i mean all the things are stopped has been completed from the queue rp challenge then next it will go for the rp challenge one we'll see that as well so right now it is a sixth transaction and another another three transactions are there and next eight nine and now transact 10 transactions has been completed from the rp challenge now it got picked the rp challenge one so like this we can go through the n number of few items so i hope uh, you know how we can uh, do this uh, logics no need to change nothing no need to change just only the keep only one for look and one config sheet i mean one extra sheet in the config file so because what need to understand how many queues are available in the office data how many queues we are uh, achieving to that so now when you say if you have two different process based on the two different queues we need to do in the one array framework then we can split for example if the uh, queue, item, uh, queue name is equal to rp challenge then go for the different process if this is related to the rp challenge one then go to for the another set of sequences with one queue we can do the sorry with the two queues we can project in the one re framework we can do that so now the final step uh what we did uh we go to this lock and we can check this so when you check here okay now this one maybe plus one got the uh, issue i think so let me go and check uh not here uh in the process transaction maybe i think c has uh, some plus one uh which got missing so let's go inside and i will check this is a part of c yes here plus two got missed so basically this should be the plus two so that's why uh we got that error but anyway you, you got the concept that is important so when you check so we have this queues and i just so right now we'll go and check one sample for example when you see this one we'll check so let's go to the orchestrator and i will go to this queue uh view transactions okay so i need to go inside again so we'll check uh one two three four one two three four we'll go inside and we'll check view details so when you check here view details let me pull like this uh where it is a comments history and we can see that this is the name uh c a not this not item three uh we can get that maybe not here if it is not found here we'll go and check in somewhere else here nothing is there uh let's go to okay here automation was not triggered from this side yeah. so let me check uh, process okay it's not uh, published here so if you want to check that end to end so we need to uh, i mean uh, publish this process and we can check so anyway you got the concept how we can got these details based on this how we can use this multiple queues in one RF framework